So that's what we're going to do next, and we'll start with the changing of the guard here. Uh, this is an easy thing for the rotor brush tool to do, <coughs> because the rotor brush tool <coughs> works like the quick selection tool inside Photoshop. It looks for the edges of something, and the edges can be defined by color differences, by contrast differences, brightness, that kind of stuff. So here, uh, these two guys that they're green, lime green, fluorescent green things are relatively easy to pick out because the color is so distinct relative to what's around them. So to do this, I'm going to make a new comp. I'm going to go to my assets here. I've got the changing of the guard here. I'm going to drag that down to the new comp icon like so. And to work with the rotor brush tool, again, because we're working with a, a, paint, a paint tool, we just work in the layer panel, double click on this to open the layer panel. Now, you can go to the paint workspace, which has the composition panel next to the layer panel so you can see how your work is going, which is fine. I kind of like the bigger view here for me, but I could do that as well. And I could just make it myself. I could take this panel, which is the composition panel, and drag it out of this frame by drag just clicking up here on the name, just pulling it out like that. When I get a little trapezoid like that to the left, that means it's going to make a new frame and sit there by itself. So that's <clears throat> another way to do this, just so you know. Mm, just so you know. But we do work in the layer panel here. So I'm going to take this guy and put him back in here by just dragging this to the left. When I have a rectangle in the middle, it puts it inside the same frame. And I want to go back to the layer panel. So I'm going to drag you to the left to so make sure my tabs are in the right order. There you go. I like that order, I like composition layer. It's more comfortable. And I want to uh, highlight these guys. So I'm going to zoom in on them to see them a little bit better. Hold on the Z key and zoom in on them. And with the uh, rotor brush selected, I have this little green circle. That's my brush. So the rotor brush, the roto brush brush is a green circle with a cross in the middle of it. That means that you're going to add something to the selection. So the way you add something is simply by drawing inside it. And you don't need to be exact. You just need to say, this thing, find the edges for me. And it did. It found the edges. Look at the little pink line there, the that magenta line says those are the edges. But it missed this part up here because it sees that as something different than the brighter color here. So I need to add to that. So I just brush there and telling it, no, include that too. But then it went a little bit too far there. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Control Command Plus. I want to get rid of that little bump there. So to get rid of something, to take something out of the scene, hold down the Alt or the Option key and it changes the brush to an Add to a minus red minus. I drag there and say, I don't want that little bump. Simple. And sometimes you want to further tell After Effects some other information. So I can hold down the Alt or the Option key and, say, and basically say, I don't want any of this stuff. And that just further gives it additional information saying, okay, nothing like that should be in your selection is what you're telling it, basically. Someone is saying that he worked days fixing things with Roto. It works well, but it's a total pain. Yes, it's like being a Disney animator frame by frame. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you're, like I say, uh, the Roto brush is not uh, going to be a fun tool for you to use, and the results are not necessarily going to be beautiful. But it's your way to deal with things like this. So now I want to select this guy as well. You can select more than one object in the same scene. So I'm going to use the same process. So I'm going to draw inside him like that, down here like that, and see what happens. Okay. It picked up this little oddity out there, and it didn't get the rest of the sleeve, so I'm going to draw down the rest of the sleeve. There we go. It made too much. I'll show you that in a second. I want to get the rest of the arm here. The brush is too big, I think, so I'll hold on the controller command and drag left to make it smaller, and drag down here to add the arm. All right, so now we've got a pretty good selection, but we don't want that bump there. Hold, on, hold down the alter of the option key and drag to get rid of the bump. All right. Hold on the alter of the option key to get rid of that odd thing. Who knows how that happened? And then this person's white, whatever that is there, hold on the Alt the Option key to get rid of that. And now we have a pretty good selection. That little thing there, I'll live with it, right? Because we're going to be zoomed way out anyways. All right, so now we have this base, um, this base frame. I need to just make sure I cover all my notes. Let's go to this base frame here. And uh, if I pull back, shift forward slash, there they are. You can barely see them in your monitor. Two little maroon things around those two guys. All right. And then when you do that, up here in the layer panel, right down here, you'll see a little orange box. That's the base frame. And then to the right of it will be 20 frames that After Effects has already uh, attempted to uh, figure out uh, how that selection is going to work using some predictions. If you go up to, you know, in the Effect Controls panel, 
you now have a rotor brush and refined edge effect. And under the rotor brush side of things, there's something called rotor brush propagation. And this basically says the rules of the propagation, which are way difficult to understand. Uh, but I, I, uh, if you want to get into the fine details of the rotor brush, be my guest. The help file, uh, or the, help, the part of the help file that comes with After Effects does go into detail about each of those little points there, and you can certainly check into them. But for what we're doing here, most times you just go with the defaults. And that's what we're going to do here. And down below here, there's a refined edge, which we haven't done yet, and we're not going to do in this particular case. So you get these 20 frames here that are based on how you tell it to propagate the frames here. That's what's going on here. And what you can do is, you, if you think that, that After Effects is going to get it, I can go forward here, it's going to now start going through those frames one at a time. A little green line is showing up here as it's going through and looking at those frames. And when it gets to the current time indicator, it'll show me its results. And nothing changed. It's perfect. It got those guys perfectly selected. If you think it's not going to be a problem, you can take these little, little like, like little chevrons. They're little V's. So on one side of the uh, of the base frame, there'll be V's that go away from it. The other side will be V's that go this direction. And you can drag them all the way to the beginning or the end, depending on where you're starting. So I can take this guy right here and drag it all the way to the end like that. Because I'm sure that... After Effects is going to get this right. And then I can take my current time indicator and go to the end and have it go through the whole darn thing and work to create frames all the way there just to confirm that it's working right and to save those frames. I'm going to stop it by taking my current time indicator back here and let it just go to that point so I don't take a lot of time doing that. And once it's selected the frames properly, which it, it's going to do here, it can't miss the green jackets there, uh, you can then freeze them which then saves them. Because uh, if you were to go to work on something else and come back to this, you'd need to go through the same process of playing through it again uh, to get to restore those frames. So if you freeze them, then it goes through a process of, re of freezing them, which takes a while. It's saving every single darn frame in like a preview video file. So I'm going to click stop on that one because it takes a while to do that. And then I'll unfreeze it to go work on it again. That's how that process works. And now look, it's building it all over again. So... <clears throat> This is the basic process to, uh, to use Broder Brush on something that's really easy to select and how you can take those little, those little angled things, those little brackets, and drag them one way or the other to create the Broder Brush for the whole thing. And once you've done that, you can then play it pretty easily. And you have now removed those guys from the background. So I go back to the composition panel. There'll be these two things sitting there all by themselves over a, uh, a transparent background. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jeff Sangstack, an Adobe Certified Expert and the Lead Instructor here at BlueEffects.net. If you want to watch this entire video lesson, as well as other live classes and After Effects crash courses, then I invite you to check out the Blue Effects After Effects Academy. Just click the link below this video to find out what we've prepared for you in the After Effects Academy.